Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP and once again, this is the seven day chart. We're sitting here just above 57 and a half cents. And you know, the most frustrating thing about holding XRP is this right here, all that sideways movement. But what that does is it teaches you patience over time. You know, being an XRP holder isn't about watching the price on a daily basis. It's about how long you can stay patient. And if you stay patient long enough, you can get financial freedom. This year is still going to be a very big year for crypto. World Economic Forum, Davos coverage. Just in, President and CEO of BNY Mellon on Bloomberg in Davos. Robert Vince says a few things in this interview. First off, I want to point out that I'm saying Davos instead of Davos because some of you called me out on it in the comments section. We've been focused on the digital asset technology since early on. Tokenization to bring new assets into the mainstream financial system. Tokenization takes assets that aren't mainstream and makes them mainstream. Tokenization is that, and we are all for that. 2024 is the year of tokenization, tokenization, tokenization. And, you know, a lot of people still don't realize how much value that is going to bring to cryptocurrencies like XRP. Man, if only Ripple had some inroads with BNY Mellon. Now, BNY Mellon was working with Ripple all the way back in 2016. Over the past few years, Ripple Labs has partnered with more than 300 financial institutions, many of which are major banks in various countries and regions around the world, including Spain, Japan, and Latin America. In 2016, BNY Mellon mentioned Ripple in its analysis report, writing that Ripple had taken a major stride in providing a standard to enable payments across payment networks. BNY knew back then what Ripple was, what XRP is going to become. XRP's ledger pioneering leap leading the $30 trillion tokenization revolution in real world assets. One thing I want to point out, XRP is not tokenizing things. Tokenized real world assets are going to be stored on the XRP ledger. They're going to bring value to the ledger, which will be reflected in the price of XRP. The XRP ledger is increasingly being viewed as a pivotal platform for the tokenization of real world assets. David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple, has expressed optimism about XRP's role in this emerging field, particularly in the tokenization of assets like real estate and commodities. This move is seen as a game changer for the blockchain economy with the potential to significantly drive its growth. One of the key advantages of XRP Ledger in this context is its low transaction cost, making it an attractive platform for initiating tokenized real-world assets. And everybody's going to want to base their tokenization venture on cost. They're also going to most likely look at security as well as we move forward. But I could see a lot of tokenization happening on the XRP Ledger. We, that's how we could also see a three-digit XRP. Ripple CTO clarifies XRP drama. While we're on the topic of the XRP Ledger, David points out about the security. Schwartz took this opportunity to delve into the specifics of the XRP Ledger's functionality, particularly addressing the partial payments feature, which was central to this incident. He's talking about the incident that happened on Bitfinex, where they tried to steal 30 billion XRP. 
He stated unequivocally that the incident was not due to any flaw or vulnerability in the XRP ledger. Instead, it highlighted the utility and security of the partial payments feature when used correctly. This feature, designed for complex financial transactions, allows for specification of a maximum amount that can be sent, ensuring that receivers cannot be deceived by receiving less than expected. Schwartz praised Bitfinex for their correct handling of the feature, which was instrumental in preventing potential issues. He stressed the importance of proper configuration and integration for all institutions and applications using the XRP Ledger's proper payments feature, directing users to the official XRP Ledger website for guidance on secure integration. And you know, still that XRP transfer is, remains a mystery. Nobody really knows where it came from yet. But you know, that shows you how game-changing the technology is around the XRP ledger as well. Larry Fink is not the only one who could talk about an XRP ETF. Listen to what Brad says here. Uh, there were a couple of interesting things after that Bitcoin ETF uh, was approved in that statement. One, and I paraphrase here, was effectively Gary, Gary Gensler saying, just because we allowed the Bitcoin ETF, don't think we're now going to allow a bunch of other crypto assets. The second interesting thing was the price of Ether skyrocketed immediately after on hopes that there could now next be an ETH ETF. Um, what are the chances of that? I think it's a certainty. I think Is here? I, I, I'm not going to put a horizon on the time, but I think there will be other ETFs for sure. An XRP I, one? I, there will be other ETFs for sure. <laughs> but, but an XRP one? <laughs> <laughs> I love this game we play. Look, uh, I am very That's optimistic. the last time I lost. I lost. That's, that's fine. <laughs> but look, the sad part of that reality is we have a Bitcoin ETF only because a U.S. court said to the SEC, you're being arbitrary and capricious in your, of, of your applica application of the law. What would be sad is if every ETF had to go through that same journey and for Gary Gensler to get smacked down by the U.S. court system again. That, that, might, be, that might be necessary, but it, you know, again, at some point, I think Gary Gensler won't be the chair of the SEC, and that'll be a good thing for the American people. Take notice how he laughed about the XRP ETF. I think there definitely will be one at some point in the future, but I never seen the need for one to drive the price of XRP. XRP is a lot different than Ethereum and Bitcoin. It will run on its utility, its game-changing technology. And that's where I always seen the value for XRP. There won't be a U.S. XRP ETF. However, all the crypto ETFs that are tokenized will run on the XRP ledger and use XRP to move the value in seconds. The higher Bitcoin climbs, the more value it will add to XRP to move the value. Let's go. OMC said exactly what I've been saying all along. It's going to be tokenized on the ledger, and anything that gets tokenized on the XRP ledger will push the price of XRP. You're starting to see why tokenization is even bigger than cross-border payments. Davos 2024 Circle CEO Stablecoins remain the killer app of blockchain technology. Stablecoins seeing Widening usage, 2024 will see mass adoption increase with more regulatory clarity and the Bitcoin ETF. Stablecoin laws are going to be on the books on almost every major financial market. Progress being made from global market regulators. Also, the technology made a big progress. Stablecoin laws in the U.S. could be passed this year. There's a desire from the administration, the Treasury, the Fed, both chambers of Congress, etc. When he's talking about stablecoins here in the United States, he's talking about a digital dollar. And a lot of people always said USDC is the digital dollar. 
And, you know, it, sure, every country is going to create their own stable coins. They're going to create their own digital currencies. But what's going to move this? It's going to be RippleNet technology and XRP, that bridge currency, bridging all the currencies together. So and whenever you hear them talking about stable coins, they're not, and even when they talk about XRP as a stable coin, they're not saying it's going to be sitting at $1. It's going to be an asset backed stable coin sitting at a, hutch, a much higher price. Brad Garlinghouse, Davos, 2024. I think we make we need to make sure we are focused on utility. Listen to what Brad says about payments here. So, Brad, are payments still the best use case for crypto assets and technology that undergrids it? And what payments can lead to in terms of other use cases? Well, for me, I mean, Ripple started with payments. Uh, actually, when I joined the company nine years ago, there were three different groups within the company working on an identity solution, a payment solution, uh, and I'm forgetting the third one right now because that was a long time ago. But it, we really, it was like, hey, let's focus on one where there's a clear, it's solving a real problem. And look, while we've had a dent, uh, maybe we've made a scratch in that market, it is a massive market. And I'm sure many people, by virtue of sitting in this room in Switzerland today, have had the experience of sending money overseas. It is still high friction, high error rate, it's slow, it's expensive. And you know, that's the opportunity to use these technologies to actually make it much simpler, much faster, without sacrificing some of the core principles around KYC or AML or what have you. So I think the payments opportunity remains very large. Uh, it will continue to make progress. And when I say that, I mean both Ripple and the industry at large. There's other people approaching in different, you know, some are going after consumer-based solutions. Ripple is very much focused on the enterprise uh, and the infrastructure around that. There are, I think, going to be other use cases that are profound. Uh, you know, I think the fact that there's now an ETF approved in the United States with major institutions like BlackRock leaning in is a uh, further validation, but I think we need to make sure that we're focused on utility. Uh, some of the things I'm sure that people in this room have heard talked about, you know, tokenization of real world assets and democratizing access to the participation in those markets, I think is very real. Uh, whether that's commercial real estate, uh, you know, and some are working on identity-based solutions and even you know, voting-based solutions. I'm certainly not an expert on those things, but I, I think the blockchain-based solutions are, are here to stay, and uh, I think in the coming... So I want to focus on a couple things Brad said there. To put into perspective how big the payments market is, think of all the announcements we got from around Ripple, all the partnerships, all the payment rails that have been put in place already. And Brad said they only made a scratch or a dent in that market. Plus, he also talked about other players entering the game. You know, it's not going to be XRP moving all the money, like I said in yesterday's video. There's going to be a lot of different cryptocurrencies, but it's only going to be a handful. It's not going to be, you know, new emerging cryptos either. You know, some are coming out of the gate as ISO compliant, but they're not so focused on payments like XRP and XLM is focused on, and even XDC would all the world's trade payments but another thing brad pointed out is that tokenization is also very big and i think he knows that's even going to be bigger than payments in the future then klaus schwab says this we need a paradigm shift trust must be rebuilt in our future in our capacity to overcome challenges and most important trust in each other i hope you're ready for the next scene of the show. You know, they're focusing this whole event around trust, and everybody knows the same thing. You cannot trust Klaus Schwab. This guy wants to enslave the planet through CBDCs. And you know, Ripple is very big at the World Economic Forum. It's because Ripple's technology is needed for the Great Reset. And a lot of people don't realize that yet. But it's not just Ripple's XRP. It's Stellar's XLM. It's Hedera's HBAR. It's Algo. It's IOTA. It's all these ISO cryptocurrencies. Without these cryptocurrencies, we would not see CBDCs. That's why they're so important.
And Harvard's Naomi Orskies says X is such a toxic place with a scary name at Klaus Schwab's World Economic Forum. You know why X is such a toxic space to the World Economic Forum and to people that work at Harvard? It's because it's a place where we come and point out exactly what their plans are. You know, this way people start to work against their plans and they don't like that. They want you to believe whatever they tell you. You know, if they tell you a CBDC is good for you, you should be 100% accepting of a CBDC. But thanks to platforms like X, we all know better. We know what all their plans are. And I'm going to do a full-on Great Reset video in the coming days because there's a lot of other talk as well. There's even talk of a new pandemic, that X or whatever virus, which I'll cover in another video. But I also want to do that in-depth flare video as well, because flare is now running up. And we're gonna, I'm going to start focusing around other cryptocurrencies as well, you know, more away from XRP. But I do want to keep you up to date on what's going on at Davos, as, or Davos, however you want me to say it. But, you know, the way I look at it is I want you to stay focused on XRP at this time because a lot of things are happening around this cryptocurrency as well. But I'm going to highlight some other cryptos in the future. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. Stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.